looking for your next family SUV, is the well-established Honda CRV still a good option? Let's take a closer look at this refreshed model. The CRV is the largest model in Honda's SUV range, and since its launch in the mid 90s, it's made a name for itself all around the world as one of the most practical, spacious, and reliable family cars that you can buy. Today, we're reviewing the refreshed fifth generation model that went on sale in 2021 and features a number of significant upgrades over its predecessor, like interior style enhancements, increased passenger space, and a more engaging driving experience. So, do these changes in improve this popular large SUV offering and should you consider getting one over rivals like the Peugeot 5008, Citroen C5 Aircross, Toyota ROV4 and the Kia Sorento. Before we start, if you'd like to browse the latest offers we have available on the CRV, click the pop-up banner above to head over to our website and make sure you've subscribed as well to keep up to date with our latest vehicle reviews. The refresh model maintains the familiar bold exterior design that the CRV has had for a number of generations. Honda has taken the if it ain't broke, don't fix it approach here. You can spot the sharp contours on the bonnet, the slim front grille, and the prominent chrome panelling with the logo displayed in the centre. It's a safe and sensible design, one that is now lagging behind more attractive rivals like the Peugeot 5008. Heading round to the side, we get a good look at the size of the vehicle. Indeed, it's still one of the largest in its segment. Length comes in at 4,600 millimetres, so it's not as long as the Kia Sorento or the Peugeot 5008, but it is much wider at over 2,110 millimetres. The wheelbase is also pretty long for the class, over 2,660 millimetres, and we'll find out a bit later on in the review how much space that's created inside. The wheel arches are broader and more muscular than before, and they house the standard 18-inch alloy wheels. You get a new design for these if you opt for the Sportline trim, new with the CRV, and that adds black and sporty styling, both inside and out. You can also spec 19-inch alloy wheels, but they are an optional extra and not included with any of the trim levels. I recommend you stick with the 18-inch wheels, though, as they do a great job at absorbing impacts at low city speeds. The body is made from lightweight material and down here we have some robust body cladding emphasizing the car's off-road appeal and indeed it is one of the most off-road capable vehicles in its segment. Up here we have silver roof rails which within house a panoramic glass sunroof if you opt for the high spec X-grade model. And over here we have rear privacy glass on the passenger windows with SE trims upwards. The front sharp contours are present at the rear, creasing the tailgate. I like how the taillight clusters strut out from the sides and you get a large pane of rear privacy glass. Overall, again, a bold look, but I feel that it fails to stand out among rivals in 2022, but let me know your thoughts. Right, the boot space has always been a big draw for the CRV. Let's find out why. Okay guys, we're looking at a 497 litre capacity here, and that's more than enough room to swallow nine of these carry-on suitcases. And as I lift it into the back, you'll notice how low that loading lip is and how long the loading bay is. So it's so easy to load heavy and awkwardly sized items into the back, and a dog will easily be able to jump into the back there. It's a great amount of space, but unfortunately it's no longer a class leader. For example, the smaller Peugeot 3008 offers a 500 20 litre capacity. The CRV used to offer in excess of 590 litres in the back here, but since switching to a hybrid drivetrain throughout the entire lineup, that's reduced quite significantly, and that's due to the batteries which are underneath the boot floor. This automatic tailgate is only available with the top spec X grade. It has a few clever features. You can program the height at which it stops to avoid it pranging a low ceiling, and you can stop and hold it at any time so it'll stay in that fixed position. At the entrance of the tailgate are a couple of hooks to strap objects down, a 12 volt power socket, and a large speaker. There's a decent amount of underfloor storage, but it's mainly taken up by the maintenance tools. However, there's a nice compartment reserved for the tonneau cover. 
One of my favorite features is that you can fold down the rear bench from the boot itself. You just pull on the handles on either side and the rear bench will fold in a 60-40 arrangement. You'll see then it folds completely flat, making it incredibly convenient to slide golf clubs, skis, and even your bike through into that rear space. This extends boot capacity to 1,694 liters, around 54 liters less if you've got the glass roof though, like we have, and in length, that's 960 millimeters you have to play with now. There's no awkward gap in the floor thanks to some clever use of material. However, my one complaint, just to make this more practical, I wish we had a 40-20-40 folding bench. That way we could just fold down the middle seat and slide objects through. Rivals like the Peugeot 5008 have this. Cool guys, so we now know that it's spacious and practical, but is it fun to drive? Let's get behind the wheel. Let's start by talking about the single drivetrain option available with the CRV. This is the IMMD ECVT, and I'll run you through what that means. This is a two litre petrol mild hybrid system that works in much of the same way as it does with the Honda Jazz in that we've got a tiny one kilowatt hour battery pack that's consistently charged by the petrol engine and through regen braking. Unlike plug-in hybrid models, you don't need to plug the CRV in overnight to recharge. However, this does mean you're not going to be able to run purely off that battery pack for particularly far. IMMD stands for Intelligent Multi-Mode Drive that was introduced to the CRV range in 2019 with the launch of this fifth generation model. This system automatically switches between three driving modes to maximize efficiency. Uh, the first one we have is EV Drive and that will run the car purely off the power stored in that tiny one kilowatt hour battery pack as such you won't be able to go particularly far maximum only a couple of miles depending on your driving situation but the car will switch to this mode when accelerating from standstill and during low speed cruising then we have hybrid drive whereby the electric motors and the engine will share the grunt of the work the car will mainly switch to this mode in most urban driving situations and when accelerating at speed and any energy that would otherwise be lost uh, will be re-diverted into the battery pack to recharge it. And then in engine mode, the car will just run off the engine like a conventional combustion power model. Now you may be thinking as the car switches between these different modes, is there any undesired feedback from the steering or does it jolt and shutter? And it doesn't at all, as it transfers torque between the, the different sources, it's impressively smooth and as such it creates a rather relaxing and stress-free driving experience. The two-wheel drive variant is powered by two electric motors generating 143 horsepower and 215 newton meters of torque for a respectable zero to 62 time of 8.6 seconds, not bad for a vehicle of this size. Miles per gallon comes in at around 43 mpg again, quite impressive for a large SUV, but my problems lie with the CO2 output, which is quite high for a hybrid model. Expect around 151 grams per kilometer on the combined cycle. That means the CRV is placed in one of the highest benefit in kind bands. So if you are a company car driver, do look more towards plug-in hybrid alternatives like the Kia Nero and the Hyundai Tucson. Performance stats are mostly identical with the four-wheel drive variant, except it takes around 8.9 seconds to get from zero to 62. My main issue with this option lies with the reduced MPG, or be averaging around 39 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. Indeed, taking a look at the trick computer in front of me, that is what I'm averaging, and we're doing a mix of city and dual carriageway driving. However, considering Honda's commitment to rolling out its hybrid drivetrain across its lineup, I would expect this car to be more efficient with its fuel, and certainly most of this car's rivals are. CO2 output again, quite high, 163 grams per kilometer, placing it in the top benefit in kind band. So unfortunately, the CRV is not the best company car option out there. The best way to drive the CRV is smoothly and carefully with few rapid changes in acceleration. If you do so, the car will plod along quite nicely and quietly because it's gonna be using the electric motors for the majority of its time. However, when you do need to rapidly accelerate, you'll notice this because the revs soar sky high. It sounds like you've stuck the car in first gear. 
The soundproofing is quite good in this car, so it's not as bad as it is with the Honda Jazz, but it's still a rather unpleasant sound. Thanks to the IMMD tech, you can take advantage of the regen braking system to harvest off whilst lost energy back into the battery pack. You can adjust the intensity of this by using the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. The left paddle will increase the rate of deceleration, while the right paddle will decrease this. Believe it or not, there's three more driving modes to talk about. We have Sport, and you can enable this manually by clicking a button on the dash Dashboard. This enables more throttle input from the hybrid system and it's great for when you need to make a quick manoeuvre out of a junction or roundabout. We have Econ Mode which will help you maximise fuel efficiency, great for if you're running low or if you're just doing slow um, cruising around town and an EV mode will allow you to run off that battery, great for very quick trips uh, to the shop or dropping the kids off at school. The CRV supports a maximum towing weight of 750 grams, which is quite disappointing for a four-wheel drive large SUV. Compared to rivals like the Toyota RV4 that can tow 1,500 kilograms. The suspension is based on Honda's latest chassis design that claims to be more refined and comfortable than before. The suspension here is soft and it's very well refined pleasantly gliding over large humps and nicely absorbing the impact of harsher abrasions like aggressive potholes. There's no jerkiness from the body and vibration throughout the cabin is kept to a minimum. The car is also calmer at higher speeds on the dual carriageway motorway than stiffer riding rivals. Just don't expect the levels of comfort offered by a key rival, the Citroen C5 Aircross, which continues to be the class leader. Four-wheel drive models benefit from the intelligent control system that helps optimize fuel and driving efficiency by splitting torque between the front and rear wheels. For example, the system can detect when the CRV is climbing a hill and therefore send more power to the rear wheels. In tandem with the raised ground clearance of 200 millimeters with four-wheel drive versions means that the CRV has genuine off-road capability that you're not gonna find with most of its rivals. Now, large SUVs aren't exactly known for their new nimble handling and nor is it a strong area for the CRV. You'll experience prominent body lean when going through to corners and tight bends and it isn't as keen to quick changes in direction as lower riding rivals like the Ford Puma. However, steering is responsive and it has a nice amount of weight to it, helping you navigate those twisty turns. Brief note on the pedals, they are nicely lined up with my feet. The brake is excellent. It's really easy to gauge how much pressure you need to provide. However, I wish the accelerator pedal was just slightly firmer. That way it'd be easier to determine how quickly the car will slow down through deceleration. Extra care went into isolating the interior from exterior noise and vibration. Inside the cabin, we have active noise cancellation tech that uses two microphones to reduce low frequency sounds from the road surface and powertrain. Indeed, around town at those slower speeds, the car is exceptionally quiet, but when you are traveling at higher speeds on the motorway and dual carriageway, road noise is certainly more prevalent and you'll start to hear wind bellowing around the mirrors. I'd expect great visibility from a large SUV and the CRV certainly achieves that. You get a great view out that front windscreen. The side pillars are slim and they don't create much of a blind spot at junctions and roundabouts. The door mirrors are gigantic and the front windows are deep as well so you get a great all-around near panoramic view of your surroundings. The view out the back window could be better and you certainly won't be able to rely on it if there are three passengers in the back and my over-the-shoulder view is slightly restricted by chunky rear pillars and this can make the car difficult to maneuver into tight parking gaps. If you think this would be a problem for you, climb up the range to get the SE trim level because this comes as standard with front and rear parking sensors and a rear view camera. The CRV is a very safe vehicle. It was tested by Euro NCAP back in 2019 and was awarded the maximum five stars, scoring exceptionally highly in the adult occupant category. It comes to standard with the Honda Sensing suite of driver assistance features, and this includes automatic emergency braking, adaptive cruise control with the intelligent speed limiter, traffic sign recognition, and lane keep assist and departure warning. With higher spec grades, you get a few more safety features, including blind spot monitoring, and that alerts you of vehicles in your blind spot by flashing signals on the door mirrors as well as rear cross traffic alert warning you of approaching vehicles when reversing out of a tight space. 
And we'll demonstrate the parking now. So on all but the entry level trim, you get a rear view camera that pops up when you stick the car into reverse. It takes a while for the guidelines to load, but they are really helpful in uh, helping you navigate this large and bulky SUV into the tightest of gaps. Honda is seeking to push the CRV into upmarket territory. The interior trim has been updated to exude more of a premium feel. And while it's not the most exciting dashboard out there, it is logically laid out and there's a good amount of material variety on display, such as the soft touch materials up here on the dash and on the doors and the hard plastics surrounding the infotainment system. The wood effect trim present with the previous model has been replaced with a silver chrome finish applied to the door panels, dashboard, steering wheel and centre console. If you upgrade to the new Sportline trim, you get a dark wood interior trim with piano black finishes for the infotainment system and climate controls. Honda are great at seats, no exception with the CRV. It's exceptionally comfortable, especially for long journeys. It's nicely padded throughout, giving you great back support and these side bolsters are nicely cushioned too. As standard, you get black fabric upholstery for the seats. You need to climb up the range to the X grade to get a choice of leather trims, ivory or black. Personally, I would have gone with the black, but this ivory certainly does add to the premium feel of the cabin. If you want power lumbar support for the passenger seat, you'll need to go with SR trims upwards, whereby you'll also be rewarded with heated front seats. The front space is nicely compartmentalized between the driver and front passenger, giving you plenty of room to adjust and get comfortable without knocking shoulders and elbows. Indeed, headroom and legroom is excellent. We've got the panoramic sunroof with this X-grade model, but it's not compromising headroom in the slightest. I am miles away, still got loads of room to play with there. There's a good amount of adjustment for the steering wheel. You can put it up and down and in and out. It's also heated with X-grade models. I just don't really like the material wrapped around it. It doesn't feel premium enough. Behind the wheel, you get a seven inch driver display that shows a large digital speedometer, your battery and fuel level status, navigation instructions and audio information. There's not much in the way of customization here, but at least the screen is large and the icons are easy to read. With X-grade, you also get a head up display that can be activated by pressing a button below the start stop button it will then reveal itself when you start the car and it shows your current speed and the speed limit of the area directly in front of you complementing this tech is the seven inch central touchscreen that has your usual functions dab radio bluetooth and wired apple carplay and android auto but this infotainment system certainly needs an update the resolution is low it's sluggish to navigate with lots of input delay and the user interface is not only unintuitive but it's outdated. Seven inches is the largest screen size you can get, and that's small compared to most rivals that offer larger 10 inch displays by comparison. Some of the buttons are quite tricky to press on the move as well, like these drive mode select buttons, and they're located quite far to the left hand side. I'd also like the unit to be angled slightly more towards the driver, and for the screen itself to be placed higher up on the dashboard. I'd also like another way to navigate it as it's touch only, perhaps a rotary dial down here. Thankfully, smartphone mirroring makes this much more better as you can effectively bypass Honda's laggy software. Complementing the infotainment are eight speakers as standard, but if you climb up the range to SE trims beyond, you get nine speakers dotted around the cabin. I'm actually really impressed with the audio system. The sound holds its fidelity well at those higher volumes. It's great to see physical buttons for the climate controls. The plastic use for these feels a bit cheap, but at least they're easy to press while on the go. Working our way down, you'll spot the drive select controls positioned on the center console rather than the conventional lever. And we have a smartphone charger with the high spec X grade. And this is complemented by two USB ports, one for smartphone mirroring and one for also charging your phone. A couple of cup holders and they nicely fit my bulky bottle. And you get a large center compartment that goes down really deep. You also get this flexible tray that you can move up and down and remove it entirely. And that will give you enough space in there to fit a handbag or small laptop. Great idea. The glove box is a decent size, as are the door bins with a nice section cut out, perfect for a 500 mil bottle. There's a generous amount of space on offer in the back here, equivalent to rivals like the Kia Sorento, which bear in mind has a seven seat configuration. Legroom is excellent, I can stretch out pretty much all the way and my knees don't come too high. Due to the wide space on offer here, there's lots of room to find numerous comfortable positions for those longer journeys. 
Adults in the back who are six foot or over won't find their head touching that roof line either. I'm 5'8", and I'm a long way off the top of that. If they do start to experience some discomfort on those longer journeys, you can recline the rear bench slightly and that's very nice indeed. Family SUVs need to have wide opening doors and the CRV certainly does. They open at 70 degrees. You couldn't have them open any further unless you actually take the doors off. That allows you to really easily load bulky kids seats into the back. We also have low sills providing great access for grandma. Other niceties include the pouches behind the front seats that go down really far and are nicely padded inside. You have a foldy downy middle seaty thingy for a makeshift armrest. They also provide a couple of cup holders, but these aren't big enough to hold my bulky bottle. They'd be ideal for a coffee cup though. And then we have the air conditioning cluster here where we can adjust the air intensity um, and you get a couple of USB ports as well. As middle seats go, this is a good one. Sliding on over, you'll find that the seat isn't as comfortable as the other two, but due to how small the central tunnel is, there's lots of legroom to be had. As a result, the CRV is one of the best large SUVs for accommodating free adult passengers. Time to talk about pricing now. There's five different trims on offer. Let's find out which one's perfect for you. The entry level S trim starts from around £32,800. It's quite stingy with its standard equipment. However, highlights here include the electrically adjustable and heated door mirrors, 18 inch alloy wheels and LED headlights and tail lights. SE is my trim level of choice. You get a great amount of equipment for the money. It starts from around £35,000 and you get front and rear parking sensors, a rear view camera and privacy glass on the back and passenger windows, plus a lot more. Sportline is the new grade for the CRV, adding sporty styling to this well-established model. It starts from around £35,900 and you get black alloy wheels, a dark wooden interior and leather upholstery with black edition stick SR trims add more comfort, advanced technology and safety features from £36,600. Highlights here include leather upholstery for the seats, lumbar support for the front passenger and blind spot monitoring integrated onto the door mirrors. To maximise your configuration, go with this X-grade model from £40,200. You'll get this gorgeous panoramic glass roof, a head-up display and heated rear seats. If you need a hand finding your perfect trim, get in touch with our team via the link below. So guys, should you buy, lease or finance the Honda CRV? Well, it has you covered for passenger and boot space, that's for sure, absolutely exceptional. Build quality and material variety throughout is also good. The hybrid drivetrain is efficient and smooth, and that creates a very relaxing and comfortable driving experience. Plus, Honda is one of the most reliable brands that you can buy from. It's highly unlikely your CRV will break down. The downsides I have with the CRV are mainly nitpicks, but there's a fair few of them. The entry level model is a bit stingy when it comes to equipment, just go for the SE trim. The infotainment system is lacklustre, certainly needs a bit of revising there. And while I do enjoy the ECVT, the sound it makes under harsh acceleration is mightily unpleasant. Given Honda's commitment to hybrid drivetrains, I was expecting better fuel economy figures than what this car delivers. Unfortunately, there's no longer a seven seat option available with the CRV, and it is more expensive than some of its rivals like the Peugeot 5008 and the Citroen C5 Aircross. If you'd like to explore the CRV in more detail perhaps chat to one of our team about it then give us a call via the number in the banner below or you could just click that pop-up banner up there oh and the link in the description that will take you to a lovely website where you can browse our latest special offers on the crv it's time to do all the youtube stuff guys please give the video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and click that notification bell down there so you'll get informed when we upload a brand new in-depth review but that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you again soon and safe driving.